Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to talk about VEX autonomous programming right now. And as many of you know, VEX autonomous programming can be pretty frustrating because you've got to put the robot on the field. You've got to make some kind of guess about how many inches to move the robot, how many degrees to turn the robot, and so on. And there's an awful lot of trial and error involved. If you are a little smarter, you can come in there and you can take a ruler and you can measure how far the robot needs to move. And that will help you somewhat. But what if there was a better way? What if there was a toolkit for programming autonomous? What if you could tell the robot with voice commands, for example, robot, move forward two inches, and you could see in real time exactly what your commands are telling the robot to do. You could see in real time immediately the effects of what your commands have the robot do. For example, you could tell the robot, robot move forward two inches. And you could say, okay, well, that's not far enough. We could need to move the robot forward another inch. So robot move forward one more inch. Okay, robot turn 10 degrees to the right. Okay, robot lift the arm 10 degrees. Okay, 10 degrees is not far enough. Robot lift the arm five degrees more. Robot back up three inches, robot turn left, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, clearly we can't talk to the VEX robot, but we can do this using the controller. Now you can't do this in driver control mode because if you push forward on the joysticks, you don't know how far the robot traveled exactly. And unless you push forward on both joysticks exactly at the same time, the robot is going to turn slightly. Whatever joystick got pushed forward first, the robot's going to turn slightly. Maybe just a degree or two, maybe more. But what if we could guarantee that the robot goes precisely one inch forward or two inches forward or one inch backwards or two inches backwards? Or if you want it to turn, we could guarantee that the robot turns precisely five degrees, 10 degrees, or so on. Well, that's what we're gonna do right now. I apologize for the handheld video, but this is the best I could do on short notice. Okay, what we did here is we've got our robot in here. We use the drivetrain We've got our controller, and we've got two arm motors. You need to come into the drivetrain, and if you are not using the default drivetrain, you need to adjust your widths and your wheelbase. So basically, you need to get your motor, you need to get your robot controls in here and get it somewhat functional, okay? All right, we come in here on the brain and we want it to show us our arm degree rotations so we know where the arm is at. Then let's jump over to the controller. All right, we're gonna zoom into these spots here. We said if controller button E up is pressed, or E down is pressed, broadcast forward one or backward one. What that does is moves the robot forward one inch or backwards one inch. Button L up pressed or button L down pressed broadcasts left 10 or left five, which turns the robot 10 degrees to the left or five degrees to the left. 
button R up, pressed or down pressed is the same thing except for the right side. And then we have our arm controls. F up pressed, arm up, F down pressed, arm down, F up released, F down released, arm stop. We'll come over here and look at the arms real quickly because we have two motors on the arm and this will help you get your arm controls set up. We set holding to on, our velocity is 50%, so the arm is easier to control. When it receives the arm up or arm down command, it spins the arm until you release the button. Now the nice thing about putting on the brain here, when you move that arm and you stop that arm and you say, okay, how high did I move my arm or how low did I move my arm? All you've got to do is look at the screen. It's going to have the display of where the rotation is on the screen. Okay, that was arm left. Arm right is the same thing. And if you've noticed, arm up spins forward, arm down spins reversed. And arm up spins forward and arm down spins reversed. The reason they're both the same is on arm here, we reverse the motor. You just have to reverse one of the motors. It doesn't really matter which one, just one of them. Now let's come and look at our drivetrain code. When start, we set our speed, we set our turn speed. If you have a robot that turns too quickly or moves too quickly, you're going to have difficulty with autonomous. The robot is going to be twitchy, it's going to be hard to control, it's going to be inconsistent. So it's not going to run the same every time you run it. Okay, when this receives the forward one broadcast, from the controller, it drives forward one inch. When it receives the backward one broadcast from the controller, it drives reversed one inch. When it receives the left 10 command, it turns left 10 degrees. Left 5 is 5 degrees. Right 10 and right 5 are 10 and 5 degrees also. And then there is a drive stop command. What we did is we put the robot on the field in the starting position and we moved forward one inch at a time. The robot moved forward a few inches. We wrote this down. We turned five degrees. That wasn't enough. We turned five degrees more until it lined up with the yellow hub. We raised the arm to the height that needed to be. Then we looked at the brain to get that reading. Then we moved forward a few more inches, raised the arm up more, got the hub. And every step of the way, we wrote down all of these steps. If we move forward three times, we wrote that down three inches forward. If we, if we messed up and you went too far forward, well, no problem. Just back up one inch. You don't have to start all the autonomous over from scratch. And make a note of it. And then when you're finished recording all the steps, getting the yellow, pushing the orange, coming around, pushing all the way into the scoring zone, and then setting the hub down, then all you got to do is go back to the VEX code to your normal autonomous coding and put all those steps in there. Now, if you move forward eight times, one inch at a time, clearly you don't need to put eight different commands. You can just add those measurements up and put one command and move forward eight inches all at once. If you move five degrees and 10 degrees and five degrees, then you can add up those measurements and just put one command where you turn 20 degrees. But what what happened when we did all this is it got the autonomous run almost perfect on the very first try, which if you've done much autonomous programming is a great step forward. Uh, it's a lot easier, a lot easier.
Um, we encourage you to uh, share this video with others. We are not trying to keep this information secret. This is, we're calling this an autonomous programming toolkit is what we're calling this. So we hope that everyone benefits from this, that everyone gets a, uh, a better robot, uh, a better score, and has more fun with, uh, with VEX.